Today I'll be interviewing William Forbes. He's a great singer at the age of only 12. I'm sure he's going to be one to shine the spotlight on in the future. You can find a video of him at my site at kidspower.com, kids with a Z, power with a three. I want to grow up. I don't want to go to school. Just to learn to be a parent and recite a silly Hi guys, welcome to Kids Power. My name is Ethan Waddell and today I will be interviewing William Forbes. Now, William, do you have any pets? Uh, no, not anymore. That sounds sad, but it's, it's true. I had a pet goldfish when I was much younger and I, I wasn't responsible with it at all. So it, it kind of, there was a lot of uh, interesting things that happened to them, but yeah, they ended up all dying very quickly. Oh, same thing happened to me. What are your strengths or dreams? Um, I'm going to say that my, my strengths are probably sports and anything related to music. And my dream is to either become a singer or a hockey player, like a professional one. Professional. Nice. Yeah. What are some of your favorite things to do? Um, well, I, I, like, I like to go around, walk, just sit down sometimes, play video games with my friends, all that. Yeah, me too. What is your favorite subject in school? Um, geography, because uh, we, we're starting to get more in depth with politics and everything we've been doing it for a few years but now it's getting much much more detailed and everything it's, it's fun detailed to learn comp yeah. there's always new things in that yeah area mm -hmm. um what is the most interesting place you've ever been um prop aruba because there there's a lot of interest it, it the weather there first of all is amazing like it, it's like the perfect <laughs> weather but there's also like a lot of very interesting like insects there's there's like a lot of stuff to see a lot of stuff to go to it's it's fun to go there it's really nice now i've heard there's like ah what's the word for it spray spray painting um or whatever it's called oh yeah yeah in there yeah, so there's there's old, really old caves that go back to like the 1700s, and apparently people from like the 1920s would go into there and like spray paint and like draw things on the cave walls, and they're still there at least from when I went there a few years ago. But yeah, it's interesting to see how all that happened so long ago, even. If you were to live there like if you had the option would you um no actually i wouldn't i it's it it's more of a place to visit not really a place to live to like when i went there um it like there's definitely a lot a little um cl there's poverty there like the houses are not as well built it, i just feel like it, i wouldn't really want to live there i would more like to live somewhere like japan or something yeah that makes sense well, what introduced you to sports? Uh, my dad. My dad, when I was younger, used to teach me how to play hockey, how to all the basics of it. He would bring me to games. He would tra bring me around the world just to watch hockey games and all that. So that's pretty much the entire reason why I I'm playing hockey now. Oh, interesting. Did your dad play sports? Yeah, when he was younger, he used to play a lot, a lot more than me, I'd have to say. Wow. Did How did you get interested in singing? Um, probably because I think I was three years old at the time. We were, we were at my dad's conference for work, and they were singing Oh Canada. And afterwards, <laughs> I went home 
and I just started singing it. Like I, I didn't know the lyrics, but I just, I just knew the entire song just suddenly. So my mom started recording it. She posted it everywhere, and she decided to put me in lessons and everything. Well, that's one interesting story. How old were you for that? Yeah, I think I was I was either two years old or three years old. I don't remember. I was very young. Now, do you remember that yourself? Yeah, I um I've kind of like I it's very like dim. Like I don't really remember most of it. I remember it happening, but yeah, I, it's I I forgot about most of it. Because it has a musical memory. Yeah. Do you take lessons? Yeah, I take lessons once every week. Do you have a teacher? Or yeah. uh, how often do you practice? Um, I practice every day. It's There's a lot of practice involved with it. The, the higher level you go, there's just it's a lot of practice and everything. All right, nice. Do you do performances? Yes, I do competitions i perform at weddings i yeah sometimes i get paid to do it but yeah i do a lot or at least i used to now that there's corona <laughs> yeah um do you, well how many performances have you done um too much to count i've been doing them for such a long time i've never really kept count of them yeah makes sense what was the biggest performance you've ever done? Um, probably a performance at the CNE. Uh, I was doing a competition called the Rising Star. So they set up a really big stage in the CNE, and there's a lot of kids there, like a really big crowd. Yeah, it was. It was very. I was very nervous. I hope you got paid for that. <laughs> yeah, there, I, I I ended. I think I ended up making a little bit, but there was a lot of good singers there. So. Do you need to do many voice exercises? Like, if you do, what kinds? Um, well, I don't really, I don't do them, like, just often. I, I do them, like, during, before voice lessons or before competitions and all that. Like, there's, ju there's just, like, a lot of things you have to practice with, like, vowels and, like, lip trills. It, it really helps with the actual singing. Yeah, that's good. Um... Do you need, uh, what about stage frights? Like your nervousness before a performance, how do you deal with that? Because I know a lot of other people have issues with that. Well, before the actual performance, I think most of the, you just really have to get your mind off, like, like the nervousness, like just breathe, calm down, all that. And then when like, you're actually, what? yeah, it's like, like you, you, what you if get, I mess up? Yeah, just you just don't think about that because that's if you think about that the chances of you actually messing up are going to be pretty high so but then when you're actually on the stage i i usually just don't look at the big crowd i don't look at their faces i don't want to see their expressions or anything but yeah i just look off into the distance i look off i look into the look at the judges or something like that i just don't want to i don't want to i usually my mind just tells me that people are going to judge me but yeah no point being overwhelmed, right? Yeah. Um, well, does singing help you as a person? Like, yeah. does it make you feel happier? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's definitely moments when you're either sad or just bored, right? You just want to, you, you just want to do something. So usually I would go to do something on like the guitar or like the piano or just sing or learn something new or listen to music. It really helps with all that. So you're a musician. What's your favorite song? Um, pretty much anything by this guy named Daniel Caesar. He's, he's, uh, not that famous, but yeah, he, he, he's a little bit popular, not that popular, but yeah, his music, his voice, I, I really like it. Sounds He's really reasonably nice. known. Yeah. Um, if you could meet, or if you could meet anybody in the world that's famous, who would it be? Um. Well, I've never really had like the desire to meet anybody famous. I, I, I just feel like 
as as you as I go on, I'll meet I'll I'll definitely meet people who are famous, but yeah, I've never really wanted to meet a specific person. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Me neither. Um, what recommendations do you have to help other young singers like you? Um, well, I would say you need to practice a lot and never give up on yourself because sometimes you just want to give up. You don't want to practice. You don't want to sing. But if you have hope in yourself, then you're obviously going to continue. And the more you practice, the more likely you're going to get to where you want to be. Yeah, I guess you need to want to do it. Yeah. Who inspires you? Like, who who makes you want to be good at your dream? My Singing. mom. My mom, your for mom. sure. Because my, my mom, she practices a lot. Even when she was younger, mm-hmm. she was told, like, focus on, focus on school, focus on, on something else other than what she actually loved, which was singing. And even to this day, she continues to practice every single day. Just at any time possible, she will try to practice. So that really I inspires guess... me. And she helps you with it, like maybe she doesn't want it to repeat through you, I suppose. Yeah, she she real she help she helps me a lot with it. Like she finds a lot of the competitions and all that. She's like my manager, basically. <laughs> That's good. How are you coping with COVID? Because I understand you can't really sing anymore uh, outside, even with masks. Yeah, well, I mean, it's definitely irritating because there's. All of it has just been at home, self-taping. I guess it's more comfortable being at home, but I would much rather be going to the actual competition because I feel like competitions also help with you to like develop like uh, less stage fright to be more comfortable in a in front of a crowd. So yeah, it it's it's been tough for sure. It's irritating having to record so much at home. Yeah, you want to be public. Everybody yeah. does. What advice do you have for other kids that are trying to get started on their dreams? Like, it doesn't need to be singing. It, it can be uh, sports. It can be, it could be singing. Like, well, I feel that you should get somebody or like an instructor or somebody who has a lot of experience in what you're trying to do to help you. Because there's a lot of things that you have to learn for sports, like techniques and and. You, there's a lot of things you need to practice that might not seem really important or anything but until later in life yeah because then you start to realize like oh I should have practiced this before and all that yeah um do you have anything you want to say like it can be anything yeah if a if you're at a competition or anything and the judge looks at you funny or looks looks at you like like you you're not doing a good job. Don't think about it so seriously, because usually they're a lot older. The younger judges won't really do that, but the older judges will. And I'm guessing it's because they have really bad eyesight or like really bad hearing or something. So they try to like like focus and like really really look at you. It's 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 scary for sure, but yeah. <laughs> It's it, 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 every single time I see that, I just feel so like, oh, my God, I must have done something bad. But actually, no. The it, look of doom. Yeah, <laughs> they, they just they just can't hear you. Maybe. Yeah. Well, William, thanks for coming out. I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you agreeing for this meeting. I really think you can go places. So keep it up, man. Yeah. Thank you.